father's house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go back to where you came from. And then she goes on and she tells them again. Now I noticed that Naomi kept calling them her daughters. And then she said, my daughters, why are you going with me? Ain't no more sons in my womb. I'm too old to get married. And if a man was to come my way and I had kids, are you going to wait for those kids to grow up? Go back. Go back. So what Naomi was really saying was, look, if you go with me, you're probably not going to get married. You're going to probably be an outcast because we don't even really deal with Moabites. Walking with me is going to cost you some things. Some things that you might really desire. Can you handle that? Now, you could just go back to where you came from. You can go back to your idolatry. You can get married. You can have some kids. And we can go on like we never had contact. We can go on like we never met. It's your choice. Now, Naomi tried to turn them back three times. Ruth cried and she said, no, Naomi, I'm going with you. And she began to cling to Naomi. Orpha cried just like Ruth did. Yep. I'm sure her towel was just as wet as Ruth's towel. I'm sure she felt just as sorry as Ruth did. Yep. But on the third time, Orpha got to thinking, not to see her crying. And Naomi said, go back, you ain't going to get married, you're going to be outcast. And I can see Orpha kind of look like, wait a minute. And I bet them tears kind of start to dry up. Because I believe her desires for what she wanted was greater than what Naomi was offering. She still wanted to get me. She still wanted kids. She still wanted that old way. She still wanted the place from where she came from. So she chose to go on like she never came in contact with Naomi. Yeah. Not knowing well, who Naomi was. Mm -hmm. Come on. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Well, Because she was she married the son. She had yep. to be there. Yeah. She had to see Naomi doing her. She had to see her worship. She had to see her prayer. She had to see the way she served her family. She had to see those things. I don't know what was taking place in her marriage. But she still said, no, nah, that ain't for me. That's not for me. Now, after... Um, <coughs> So she what so what Orpha done, she when she after she thought about what Naomi said, she said, fist pound, and kissed her on her cheek. Mm. And she chose to go back to her idolatrous ways. Mm. Mm. Now up to this point, Naomi always referred to Ruth and Orpha as her daughters. Mm -hmm. But after Orpha made the decision to go back, Naomi referred to her as Ruth's sister-in-law because she had, there was no common bound, there was nothing. So she said, you might want to go with your sister. And when Orpha began to turn back, she disqualified herself from being a daughter. She disqualified herself from what God had for her because she couldn't lay herself aside. Now in Luke 9 and 62, Jesus said, no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. Okay. Didn't say you wouldn't be saved. Just said you wouldn't be fit for the service Come on now. Yeah. in the kingdom of God. Right. Maybe yeah. church, but not the kingdom of God. So Orpha didn't really have a metaneo. She didn't really have a change of mind. She was still full of herself, full of her desires, and what she deemed to be important in life. Yeah. Which is the way a lot of us can be. We still want to walk after the course of this world and call success what the world calls success. We still have a lot of things that we want to bring in when maybe, and it don't even necessarily have to be a bad thing. Just might not be what God has for you. Now that's the part I really liked. Let's look at Ruth uh, 1, 16 and 17. I'm going to read it in the NIV version. <coughs> it says, but Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or go back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. 
May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death mm. separates you from me. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Lord. And I love Ruth's reply. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me translate it to today. <laughs> what, what Ruth said was, Naomi, don't ask me to leave you or turn back from you. I want to go everywhere you go, and I want to stay in the places you stay. If it's good for you, Naomi, it's good for me. I want to have the same conventions and the same core values you have. I want to serve the same God you serve. I want to serve them the way you serve them. And if anything happens and I become otherwise minded, I pray that the Lord will quickly deal with me, but not even death will separate me from you. God is looking for and raising up to serve in the house of God. Someone willing to count everything that they've acquired dumb that they might win Christ. Ruth made, oh, let me say this too. When we face with a decision on who you're going to serve, this is the same kind of saying we should have. When you out and about and things are said about your place of worship, this is the same saying you should have. Because you know it's my deal. So Ruth made a strong stand for God. And I believe that there was a hope on the inside of Ruth for what she hadn't even seen yet. She only had a glimpse of what was to come through Naomi. So she didn't even know what was about to take place and she still made that stand just simply based on the time she spent with Naomi when they were in Moab. Uh -huh. Naomi had to be doing her thing. She had to see something about Naomi. She had to, she had to check out her worship. She had to check out that prayer in order for her to make this stand. And she said, not even in death am I going to separate you, which tells me she believed in a resurrection. That not even, not even then am I going to be separated from what I said I was going to do. This is how I know she did. Naomi, um, where am I at? Let me say this. But Naomi, Na but it was enough to persuade her. She didn't say, I'm going to give this thing a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see where this goes. I'm going to come check out this ministry. I'm going to see where this ministry goes. I'm going to give it a couple of days. Right. And then I'm going to see if this is something I'm going to do. No, she said, I'm going to do this now and forever. This is my life. And I think she believed this scripture. For godly exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and that which is to come. But Ruth has seen something in Naomi to make her cleave so hard. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as in this house. Mm -hmm. You should not be part of a house that you don't see nothing in yeah. that yeah. makes you have right. a desire right. for it. Right. It should make you cleave yeah. to what you see. Yeah. You should want something that you see in this ministry so bad yeah. that you're willing to sacrifice whatever you got yeah. to get it. Yeah. See there, has to be, oh, see, there has to be something in the house that you have seen or heard that sparks a desire and euphoria. Mm -hmm. And when Ruth saw it, she was not letting it go. Yeah. She didn't care how many times Naomi said, this might not be for you. Go on. Go on. Mm -hmm. She still stood her ground <laughs> and said, no, I'm going. Yes. Yes. And she was willing to leave all she had previously known, mm -hmm. all her previous thought patterns.